Hello YouTube, my name's Sean Connors and welcome back to the Outsiders channel. Um, you see me in my new gaming room here, it's still taking shape, um, it's a work in progress. I have a, a couple of large cabinets and units up now, uh, starting to fill those. I need about five or six to put in the key items that I want for my collection. And then this room will form part of the gaming room going forward. And ultimately I plan on using that gaming room over the next year. We'll talk a little bit about that at the end. But why I've started here for this first video and why I've returned to YouTube is I believe I've now got a new wealth of experience and a new wealth of ideas that I wish to share with you, the greater audience, and my fellow DMs, players, board gamers and various other people. My channel is going to have three distinctive flavours of it over the next few months. Uh, two of those flavours are going to be very much more prominent than the third. And the first two flavours are going to be, roleplay is going to be the primary driver of this channel. There's going to be intermittent pieces on board games. I've got some of those along the top shelf here and some hidden in the cabinet behind me here. All of these have an, imp and an impact on roleplaying as well. Strange enough, give me loads of creative ideas. Uh, but the primary focus for this next first few months is going to be roleplaying games. And then next year, September 2016, I'm going to do a few videos on the NFL National Football League. Uh, this is primarily because I love the sport. It's been something that's been part of my my uh, my core upbringing for a number of years, and it's something I want to share with some other people. Now, that may not appeal to you, I understand that, but it's something I actually enjoy, and I will be doing something on that. So those are videos you can take or leave, really. That's the point. You'll know clearly what they are before you see them. But this is going to be... The focus is all going to be about role playing to start. Anyway, thank you for sticking with me through the hiatus of me not being around. And there's been a couple of fall storms, and I apologise about that, but I think it's now time to get back to doing what I've actually always enjoyed, which is making video content. This room is now... Um, I've never had a gaming room before. We've never had the luxury of space before, which sounds quite sad, but it's a fact. And finally, uh, for uh, the first time in many, many years, I've been able to get some of the products out that I want to, some of the things that mean the most to me. And I'm starting with this because these are my memories. These are my drivers as a GM and a player or a creator. They are very, very important memories to me. If I got rid of them, which a lot of people do, um, I'm literally destroying my latent memory bank. I'm getting rid of it. I'm destroying it. And that's why a lot of GMs are hoarders, actually, by definition, because these books have a much more important, um, a much more important a um, contact when you touch something physically than they do if it's just a PDF. That's why people hold on to these things as if their life depended on it, because it's like they're, you know, in the nicest way, it's like their children. They're so precious to them. And people don't often understand this, but I do as a creator and a, a DM, because any time I reach a, a, a time period where I get a block, um, a memory issue, something where I, I can't get over something, I always come back to the classics. I always come back to the books. I always think of the physical items first. And it's like when I build props, because when I'm building props, I know the power a good prop has for a player. That immersion that you gain through the prop is worth its price of admission alone. And the players' faces when they see something that you've put effort into like that is immeasurable. And that's what makes these books so important to me, or the games, or whatever it might be that's in this room. Now, the other thing that I want to back this up with is the fact that when you think about things, I mean, like, when I want to sit down and start writing, um, or designing games, or various other things, I need to have the right pen. In my case, it's a fountain pen, you know, the old-fashioned cartridge one. Um, the right kind of paper and a quiet environment, the right type of room, and it works very well. And you surround yourself in a room like this with all these memories. It makes you want to game, it makes you want to do videos, it makes you want to get back out there and start putting your content out there. I'm going to be using this room for a couple of projects uh, over the next couple of months. I'll talk about that in a moment, but let me hint on those. It's going to be a new role playing group here in Daventry. And I'm going to try and do the. Uh, uh, I'm going to try and get a board game, quite an involved board game, off the ground once a year meetup for a weekend here in sunny Daventry, just outside of Northamptonshire. Advanced Civilization, one of the classic board games. Going to cover it off in a future video, actually, and hope to get a game off the ground because it, it's it's just such a wonderful game. No dice, a lot of role play elements. Brilliant game, brilliant game. Anyway. I digress. The reality is, is that this is a bit like me speaking to a professor. Now, you imagine you went into a professor's room. It looked like a library, wouldn't it? You know, they'd have 
all the classics. You know, if it was an English literature professor, he'd have his Charles Dickens, Emily Bronte. He'd have a whole plethora of stuff working his way right up to modern day of things that interest him as a professor. Well, it's very much like what you see here, really, isn't it? I mean, when you think about it, I'm surrounding myself with things that have that significance, have that contact. And if I ever get stuck, I always come back to the basics. And the basics are, in this hobby, the very first editions of the game. And I think a lot of people forget this. Now, if you've only been involved in this hobby for a short period of time, when we say 15 years, short period of time, it's frightening to think that, isn't it? Um, you might only have been brought up in the last few years on things like D&D, third edition, 3.5, Pathfinder. You, that's all you might know, you know, and I would understand that because these things are not that easy to find. It's a niche, you know, uh, the games are harder to find these days. It's not as simple and you've got to want to have the will to go out there and actually go looking for other games to try out. Plus, you have to have the audience to try them out with, of course, when we're talking about role playing games. But it's so important as a GM that you do this because what it does is it gives you a mountain of understanding around why you as a GM like a particular genre and style and that collective reflective training that you will have gone through to understand who you are as a GM that will massively help define your audience, your players and their appreciation of the craft because of your pursuit if you will, of finding what it is that you really like best. And that's very, very important. And that's what this room really reflects. It totally reflects. It's like dormant memory bank in my mind, everything that's in here. From the board games above me here, to various books along the side, to stuff that has memories buried in it, to Warhammer 3rd Edition, Warhammer in general, why it's so important to me. And then in future videos, we will cover off certain games. And this leads me to a very nice point in this video before I conclude with a couple of the things that I'm looking to do in the near future. Um, it is that, um, and I've lost my train of thought, so there we go, first video back and he's completely fluffed it straight away, which is great. Um, yeah, let me think about that for a moment, we'll come back to you. Yes, I had to think about that for a moment, I do apologise, but it finally came back to me. The most important thing to remember is that this is the reason if you've only been gaming for a very short period of time, um, you may only have had experience to a very narrow band of sound, a narrow band of, of the colour palette, if you will. You've been experienced only a small thing and you have to open your experiences up if you want to really become, you can have experience of something. But if you want to become an expert at something, and you need to do it, it's not just a question of doing something for a long time. It's a question of actually doing something for a long time and actually getting real reflective uh, knowledge and training out of it. That is very, very important if you want to be um, regarded as a very, very good, a great DM, a really excellent DM, someone whose games are so worthwhile seeing. Um, I would highly recommend that that is the thought process that you go down and try to commit to. Now, I spoke about in this video very briefly about a couple of projects that I'm looking to get off the, off the ground. You'll notice at the end of this video, I've put in there my new email. If you have any questions around, um, you have any questions for me um, in and around the hobby of role-playing games, board games, or various other things you would like to see or want to talk about, then feel free to send me over any information or anything you would like to be, have covered off. If you are a games designer, uh, board game, or role-playing game, and you're interested in having your game reviewed, I'm going to tell you something about that that is going to be important. Yes, I will review your game, but I won't do it immediately that I've got the product. This is something that's been bugging me on YouTube for quite a number of, quite a long time actually, and I'm guilty of this as well. And that is that we tend to, people who do reviews on games or books, tend to get the game, it's never really play tested, and then they rush the review out. That really bugs me, quite frankly. That's pathetic, quite frankly. And I'm guilty of that. I'm guilty of that. Um, and I won't be doing that. What I will be doing is once the game has been heavily play tested over a few months, then I will review it. So, again, the same format. If you want something to be reviewed, I'm happy for you to make contact with me. I will have a think whether I'm the right person to review it. As you know, I'm quite picky with what I will review. But if it suits me, then yes, I will happily review it for you. And finally, the two projects that I've mentioned, um, I'm going to be trying to get a group off the ground for a yearly event about Advanced Civilization, the original Avalon Hill classic board game, one of my favourite all-time games, a brilliant game. It needs 
time, normally eight to 12 hours to play. It'd be lovely to do it over a couple of days in a relaxed atmosphere here in the gaming room and uh, enjoy that experience. And as well, get a gaming group off the ground here in Northamptonshire. We're about 20 miles away from Coventry, 40 miles away from Birmingham. It's got to be possible to get at least a monthly game off the ground at the very minimum, maybe a weekly game if we get enough local people interested in that, because it seems such a shame that I do all this travelling to games and haven't got a local game. I've been saying that for a long time, but now I have the space and now I have the ability to do it. Anyway, I've been Sean Connors. Thank you very much for watching the Outsiders 68 channel. All that leaves me to do is say goodbye, happy gaming to you, and I'll see you very shortly for the next video all about some new collective learning. Anyway, take care.